Hey guys, uh, this will be video one in a series of instructional videos on how to tune your AEM EMS V2. There are a few other videos out there that are a decent start at very basic concepts on how some of this stuff works. I say this and stress the word some because tuning any good aftermarket EMS requires a systematic approach as to how to get everything working correctly. Um, you would be amazed at how many people out there try to tune their EMS no matter the system without even setting uh, the injector latency or calibrating their TPS or setting their O2 sensor upright or having their MAP sensor read correctly. So much of what is shown in the following videos, and I cannot stress this next statement enough, is totally dependent on how mechanically sound your setup is. The majority of problems out there stem not necessarily from the tune, but from vacuum leaks, uh, improper calibration of sensors, incorrect wiring, bad grounding, um, you know, bad voltage supply. Uh, so again, everything in the following series of videos is going to assume your mechanical and uh, electrical um, components are, are sound. Um, I'm sure you'll hear it echoed again and again in the following videos. It, if you follow the instructions in this series of videos and your particular setup is operating as it should mechanically, you're going to end up with an exceptional tune, um, probably better than, than you can get at, at, your, at your nearest diner, dyno shop where you know you drive over there, they strap you down, they dial your, your fuel map in, your, your ignition map, you're making okay power, and then that's it, you're done. They throw in some base settings in there for starts and idle and all that and just off you go. Um, so we're going to take a step back and start from square one um, and then build on top of that. So having said all that, here we go, video one. This is going to cover a lot of what we just talked about and making sure everything is set up correctly. What I'm going to do is just open up your base 6100 um, uh, super map uh, and none of this exists right now just don't act like it's not even there don't worry about breakpoints or limiters or your fuel map or your ignition map or your trims everybody wants to jump right into this and you know get right to to the heart of it forget all this exists none of it none of it exists right now um, run up here to wizard set up wizard and the very first thing we're gonna do is set up our uh, our map sensor manifold pressure sensor all you need to do is select which one you're, you're using if you're using a five bar just double click it and it'll show match down here it'll give you uh, you know some conversion factors and um, you know voltages and things like that um, so click apply closed um, you know we'll just go ahead and do all of the wizards at one time here what you'll also want to do is we'll set up your O2 one and let's just say we're using an innovate LC1 double click it don't worry about it selecting both of these. It just happens that their voltage uh, reference to, to AFR is is the same. And same thing up here. Whenever you click like on the, on some of these AEMs, all three of them are the same. So you haven't messed up or clicked anything wrong. They're they're just all the same. Don't worry about it. And it tells you down here again what the voltages are. So apply there. Um, let's do air intake temperature sensor. And keep in mind that the AIT sensor is by no means necessary to do any kind of real tuning with with the, the AEM. Its uh, <laughs> its significance actually comes down to about two maps. That's it, um, and they're both based on temperature. One of them's for like a percentage fuel increase. Uh, it's just a 2D map, and the other one's for ignition. Same thing. Um, so the air intake temperature sensor is not nearly as uh, essential to getting everything tuned right as your MAP sensor. Uh, coolant temperature is very big, TPS, um, and then you, obviously your cam and crank, uh, knock sensors, things like that. So um, these two right here are obviously the same. Uh, and even if you have some different GM part numbers, these cover almost any air intake like GM air intake temperature sensor out there so it's it's really close um, then we're gonna go up here to injectors the primary injectors and just for s simplicity here let's do let's do ID 2000s um, you'll notice it also has fuel pressure there at, at 43 psi that means um, they're assuming 
that um, when your motor is fully warm, fully warmed up at your desired uh, idle, you know, um, 900, 1000, doesn't matter, that your, uh, your correlating fuel pressure is at 43 PSI. That's under load. That's with vacuum, um, you know, pulling that regulator open a little bit. So whenever you're fully warm, at idle, you know, pretty pretty smooth idle, um, and you know with with vacuum attached to it, that you're at 43 psi, um, and I'll have all this in another video. But for now, just you know, go through here and select you know whichever injector you're using, and it will uh, change this battery offset. You can see this battery offset primary behind here, changing as I as I change this. So. Um, for now, just know that you need to come in here and get the battery offset uh, table right um, uh, but before we before we move any further. The only other thing to do that's essential at this point, um, make sure go ahead and click apply before you get out of this, is to do let's do um, set throttle range wizard. Now, I, in some of these other videos, they take you through this and then that's it. They're done. Um, I'm, I'm going to get more picky than that, uh, and I will. It will become uh, evident later why I want those specific values. Um, but anyway, um, with your foot off of the throttle, just click your set TPS min volts, and it will show you the corresponding value here. Could be 0.32, could be one, one volt. It just totally depends on your setup. Then pull your foot uh, all all the way into it, uh, all the way to the floor. And then click set TPS volts max. This you know will give you a value of close to 100. Now after you're done with this, go over here to the sensors, and um, we'll, we'll we'll start with the the throttle because this is the only thing we really need to change in here. Change these volts manually, the min volts and the max volts, and you know use the the you can use the plus and the minus key to bring it either way, and make sure that you hit enter to commit that value. If you don't hit enter, you can do this all day and click somewhere else and reverts it back to the old value. Change your min volts to where the throttle is right around 1% all the time. With, with your foot not on it, um, it reads right around 1%. A little above or a little below is fine, but right around 1%. Not 2% or 3% or 0%, especially not 0%. Um, and then do the same thing with max volts, but make it read about 99 98.5 somewhere in there. It will come into play later why I want these values, and I'll show you, you know, um, why they need to be this. But for now, just play with these two values until, with uh, your foot off of it, it's about one, and with your foot all the way into it, it's about 99. The other thing to do is make sure that your engine load, um, without no load on it, uh, just just key on, reads right around zero. And uh, with vacuum applied, it goes down into the negative, you know, negative five, six, seven, just depends on your, you know, particular motor, your cams, all that kind of stuff, how much vacuum it reads. And it also reads boost the other way. So make sure that it's reading positive with positive, negative with negative, and it's around uh, atmospheric or zero when there's no load on it. You can actually check this with like a little mighty vac and just hook it right up to the end of the sensor. Turn the key on, pull some vacuum to it, and you'll watch it go negative. Um, and then you, you can, I've even, you know, used, used my mouth sometimes, and you can provide vacuum to the sensor and watch it change, blow in it a little bit, and you can see positive pressure. So you don't have to do all this with the car running. You can check a lot of this stuff without the motor even running before the first time you even start it. Um, so make sure your map sensor is reading correctly. That is the biggest thing. Make sure your wideband is reading correctly. It should show, like, full lean, you know, 18, 20 AFR or something. Make sure your throttle is reading right, and as you give it throttle, it's a nice linear adjustment from 0 to 100, um, depending on where your foot's at. Also make sure you select your proper injectors. Those are the, the, the things that have to be set up right before you move forward. If, if that stuff is not working right and not set up right, everything we do in the next however many videos I make, is you're, you're going to be chasing your tail. It just it doesn't matter. Now there's other stuff in this setup wizard, um, boost control, um, uh, feedback O2 control. That stuff we will cover later in the video dedicated to 
O2 feedback and dedicated to boost control um, or coil dwell. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my next one. We'll start getting a little more in-depth and covering some, some funner issues. All right, see you soon.